All right, this section 4.4 in your Foundations of Precalculus Math 10 textbook on page uh, 222 is talking about fractional exponents and radicals. Sorry for my handwriting there. But I did show you this sheet right here that I have handed out to you, and I've asked you over the last few minutes to start working on this. And so we're going to go over this here right now. First of all, there's a chart and there's some questions. And some of you may know how to handle exponents that are fractions, and some of you may not. I don't expect any of you to know how to do all this. This is why we're doing this kind of exploration worksheet. And so the instructions that I would give you to begin are a couple things. First of all, this uh, is the kind of the, uh, the chart, the header, right? This is x. These values under here are values for x. What we're going to do to all of these values is take the value to the power, that's an exponent, of one half. And the other thing that I would suggest, if you're using your calculator for this, please make sure that you use brackets around the exponents. All right, so for this, this one right here, for this middle uh, section right here, you're going to do 4 to the power of, and on my calculator here, this is the button for to the power of, and then you're going to want to use your brackets to put in your uh, exponents. So, uh, let's go uh, maybe enlarge this a little bit so you can see it a bit better. But on this worksheet right here, okay, we're going to do this first one. 1 to the power of 1 half. Okay, so what did you get for uh, an answer? One to the power of one half. What did you get? One. Very good. That is correct. Four to the power of one half is two. Very good. Now, negative nine. Now, as you guys were doing this, I know there was some discrepancy with negative nine. So what is negative nine to the power of one half? Some of you got what? negative 3. And some of you got what on your calculators? Some of you got error. Oh my goodness, error. And of course, we've already decided that you need to take those calculators back, right? Because they're, they're not helping us at all. But, wait a minute. Actually, let me talk about what's happened there, okay? So this is teaching point number one. A, how to use your calculators, and B, why you get the answer you get. So, when you're doing a negative number and you're taking it to an exponent, if you don't use your brackets, this is what happens, okay? Your calculator says, all right, negative 9 to the power of 1 half. What your calculator does is it always does the order of operations, or it should, which means you do any brackets, no brackets, exponents go next. So it does 9, that's just a regular old 9, to the power of 1 half. This is what it does first and it gets 3, and then it applies the negative, and that's what you get for an answer. So some of you got this. Now, some of you, maybe you use the brackets, or maybe you just have a different calculator with a different display, but this is what actually we're looking for. This is what this actually means. And if you did this on your calculator, you should have gotten an error, or your calculator says can't do it, syntax error, error, cannot do, uh, undefined, whatever it should show up. Now, why is that? That is because when what you guys are finding here, right, with all of these, this should be 5, this should be, um, oh, sorry, 8, I skipped one there, uh, this should be 8, and what you're finding is that this 1 half actually means what? What does it actually mean? It's the same as taking the square root, very good. So, over here, I'll go back over here, 4 to the power of 1 half actually is the same as square root. Of four. That is absolutely true. If that's the case, then the square root of negative nine is going to be an issue. That There is no real answer for this. And why is that? Because square root means that we are looking for some number when multiplied by itself gives us this value of negative nine. If we take a number and multiply it by itself to get negative nine, there is no such real number. And if you're saying, yes, it's negative 3, Mr. Maxwell, well, then I would suggest that if you actually do this on your calculator, negative 3 times negative 3, you won't get negative 9, will you? You'll get positive 9, because a negative times a negative gives you a positive. The other option would be positive 3 times positive 3, which is this. So there is no number that when you square it can give you negative 9. That's why it's an issue. 
you cannot do any negatives with a uh, fraction of one half. No. Or, as we will find out later, any um, fraction that has an even number in the denominator. This also does not work. But that, that's a little bit later. Okay, let's work this through. Uh, x to the one third, what'd you get here? That should have been two, correct. What about this? 27 to the power of one third, that should be three, good. Now, obviously this negative, right, we're gonna have an issue, right, with a fractional exponent. What'd you get here, error? Did everyone get negative four? Oh, everyone got negative four. Well, guess what, that is absolutely correct, negative four. Because, yes, okay, you're right, so you guys are on it already. So this one-third is the same as the cubed root of whatever number is under there. That's the same as the cubed root. Here's the square root, square root of x. This is cubed root of x. Now, the cubed root, what does that mean? The cubed root means we are looking for a number that multiplies by itself how many times? Three times to get the this this number underneath there. So we are looking for some number times itself three times to get negative sixty-four. And of course there actually is a number because when you multiply a negative times a negative times a negative, you end up with a negative answer. <clears throat> so the negative when we're talking about cubed root is okay. A negative number taking the square root of that is not okay. All right? So this would be error here. It's it's undefined, okay? Or NA or whatever. It's not a real number. And of course there are numbers that are unreal. Yes, we'll find out about that, you know, later in your mathematics career, okay? So 125 is 5 216 6. What's the pattern? Well, we kind of said it already. If you had something like, you know, x to the power of one half is the same as the square root of x, and x to the power of one third is the same as cubed root of one third, or cu sorry, cubed root of x. That's that's what I'm asking you. That's what I was hoping that you would uncover. Okay. <clears throat> if you went further, did anyone have anything else that you want to share? Okay, some of you maybe were thinking this, but this would have been good too, that the denominator, the number in the denominator of the fractional exponent is actually the same as the index of the radical. <clears throat> so this number is the same as the index. That is only when, well, it's not only when one is on, on top, but, but we're going to have uh, examples where there is not one on top. But this actually still holds true even when the numbers are not 1. Yes. This number right here is the index of the root. So, which means that x to the power of 1 17th is, yes, the same as the 17th root of x. Not that anyone would really ever need to calculate that, but that's, the, well, that's what it means. So the negative values for x, okay, um, you would say something like, you can't take um, a negative number to the power of one half. That's what you would have noticed. Power of one half. But you can take a negative number to the power of one third. That's something you would have known. We've got error right here, and we've got an actual number right here. If you don't believe me, let's let's take a peek here. So let's turn the calculator on. Okay, there's 4 to the power of 1 half that I did earlier. And if we're going to take, uh, let's say, a uh, bracket here, let's do negative 64, okay, and I'm going to take that whole thing to the power of 1 third. Notice I'm using brackets for everything like this. Good way to keep everything separate. And of course, the answer is negative Four. That's okay. Okay, so state the exponent law that describes the pattern in your own words. <clears throat> okay, any offerings here? What did you, anybody write anything down here? No? Anyone want to be brave? All right, well, you want to kind of describe the pattern here, I guess. Okay, and, and what I maybe mentioned that 
um, for fractional exponents, and I'll just write this out here for you. For fractional exponents, the denominator is the same as the index of the radical. And that's what I outlined in green here. This half of the assignment is a little bit different. What do you notice? You should notice that we've got a number other than 1 here. So, uh, whoa, 1 to the power of, uh, what was it, 3 over 2 here? Okay, 1 to the power of 3 over 2, what'd you get? 1. What's 4 to the power of 3 over 2? 8. Did you get 8? You should have gotten 8. What's 9 to the power of 3 over 2? 27. Oh, this is interesting. What's 25 to the power of 3 over 2? 125. And 64 to the power of 3 over 2? 512. Okay. Now, let me just sneak over here. And we are doing 9 to the power of 3 over 2 as an example. Okay? And that comes up to 27. What do you notice about the exponent that was the same as from earlier on in the worksheet? It has a what? What's down here? It has a 2 in the denominator. Okay? Is there any way that 3, that is the square root of 9, and 27 are related? How are 3 and 27 related? 3 times 9 is 27. Yes, that's true. Or, well, not cube root, but 3 cubed is 27. Yes, that's what you meant. So, what I'm suggesting is that, hey, actually, you could also write that like this. E equals the same thing. Now, yes, you said 3 times 9. 3 times 9 is 27. Yes, you also did say that. But let's take a look at 125. Okay, let's do another example. So I have uh, 25 to the power of 3 over 2. And we notice that we have a 2 here. And we said earlier that the denominator in a fractional exponent means the same as the index. So what if I did square root of 25 and took care of this part? And then 3, seeing that it's just a number in the denominator, what if I cubed this? What would I get? Well, this would be 5, and then cubed, what's that? 125. See that? Okay, let's do 2 thirds. Let's do 2 thirds. What about negative 8 to the power of 2 thirds would you get? You got error? Anybody else get error? Yeah? Okay, did you... Um, okay, let's, let's... You did the whole bracket thing? Okay, good, let's check it out. So... On, thank you, bracket, negative 8, bracket, to the power of, bracket, 2 divided by 3. Is that what we're looking for? Hmm. You guys got error. You shouldn't have got error if you have uh, this. You got that and you got error. Let's see if you get it again when you do it again. You guys all get error? Okay, well, let's take a look at it. Let's follow the same pattern as over here. All right? So, negative 8 to the power of 2 thirds. Could we do negative 8 cubed root of that? Is this possible? Because that's what this means? Could we do this? Now, let's see. What's the cube root of negative 8? That's actually negative 2 squared is 4. Now listen, that's what I got, it's 4. Okay? Um, I tell you what you might have done. I know what you might have done to get error here. Did you use the minus sign? Because if you use the minus sign when you mean negative, your calculator will not like you. Should be, the answer should be 4 because of this right here. Now, I know this is looking a little bit uh, complicated, but let's just run through this again. So, negative 8, this should be 4. 27 to the power of 2 thirds is what? Nine. Okay. Um, 64 
to the power of two thirds, 16, negative 20, 125, to the power of two thirds is 25, and 216, get 36. Okay. So, <clears throat> If you are able to understand this pattern, and this is sort of why I did this part, okay? The two under here, now, now look at three halves is the same as saying that's one half times three. That's what three halves actually is. Three over two is actually one half times three. So you can write it like this. Do you guys remember exponent laws in grade nine? When you have a power raised to a power or an exponent raised to another exponent, you actually just multiply them. Well, that's what we've done. 3 over 2, we're writing it as 1 half times 3. So, what is 16 to the power of 3 quarters? Well, let's do this. Let's do 16 to the power of 1 quarter. Uh, and then we will cube it. So, what's 16 to the power of 1 quarter? Well, that's the same as the 4th root of 16. And so, what's the 4th root of 16? What times itself four times give us sixteen? Two times two times two times two. So what is two cubed? Eight. Now the only thing I can think of right now, just off the top of my head, is that because this is a negative number, really the, the cube root of negative eight, it is uh, negative two. But because uh, I don't know, I mean negative two squared is positive four, but you get the same answer if, if this was a positive eight which your calculator may be saying, I don't like assuming that, because when you squared it, I don't know, I don't think it gets rid of the positive sign, or the negative sign, and I don't know. There may be just some uh, different way we need to type that in as well, though. Okay? All right. A couple other things here, guys, as we finish this off. What is 100 to the power of 1.5? Now, if you see a decimal, if you can write that as a fraction, you're going to be able to... And you need to do that. So don't just blindly type in 100 to the power of 1.5 equals. Think about it. 100 to the power of 1.5, as a fraction, that's 3 over 2. And you can do this in your head. That's the square root of 100 cubed, which is what? 10 cubed. What's 10 times 10 times 10? 1,000. All right, thousand. So I need you guys to be able to understand a couple things here. The roles of the uh, the fraction as an exponent, that what the numerator does, what the denominator does, and be able to um, you know flip decimals around in your head. Okay. Okay. So. Um, Write this as a radical. How would you write this as a radical? Knowing what you know from your paper. Anybody? What is this in radical form? This is in exponential form right now. Remember what this 3 represents? Yes, no? Pay attention. I didn't ask you to simplify it, I just asked for in radical form. Remember, that 3 means cube root. Okay? What about, what about this? 5 to the power of 2 thirds. How could I possibly write this in radical form? Um, well, uh, you could go 5 to the power of 1 third in the brackets to the power of 2. Yeah, not, not 3, but 1 third. Yeah, you meant 1 third. Okay. So this is still an exponential form. How can I change part of this into a radical, at least part of it? What do you see there? Yeah. Thank you. The cube root of 5 all to the power of 2. Okay. I'm going to show you one other thing here too that this exponent here this one right here can be written outside the brackets so that means you could take the cube root of this thing first and then square that answer or you could actually do this well this is the same 
the cube root of 5 squared. So this square right here could be inside there as well. Those are the same. So that's, that's something you may run across uh, as well. Those are equal. That is okay. If you did that on your calculator, you would get the same answer. Okay. Okay, so these exponent laws that we are talking about today look like this. Any value x to the power of a fraction, and we'll say that's m over n, just two uh, other variables, is going to be equal to the nth root of x all to the power of m. which is also equal to, or equal to the nth root of x to the power of m underneath the root. That is actually still the same. So you see, really, both of these are exponents, right? So do you do the 1 third first, or the 1 over n first, or do you do the m first? doesn't matter. So that's what this is saying. You could take x to the power of m first, and then take the nth root. It makes no difference if you take the nth root of x first, and then take out all that to the power of m. It's the same thing. So that's the that's the, that's the big deal right there. Okay. So that exponent law. Any questions on that? All right. What about? Now this one is, uh, I don't know if this one's going to freak you out or not. But what about something like this? 4 ninths to the power of 1 half. You guys know how to deal with fractions that are taken to fractional exponents? Well, if we do this on our calculator, let's just give it a test here. We would have... 4 divided by 9 as a fraction to the power of 1 half. What do we get? 0.667. All right, 0.6 repeating. Now, can I take that, and, and there's a fancy function on this calculator, I can take the answer and put it into a fraction form. And what does that give me? 2 thirds. All right. That's what that equals. So it equals... 2 over 3. Anyone see, a, anyone see a relationship between this question, like what the, the question was and what the answer is? Anyone notice anything? Okay. Go ahead. Um, well, not, not exactly. Not exactly divided by 2. Not divided by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2, yes. But 9 divided by 2? You're close. I think I know what you meant. Anybody else want to pipe in? Okay, 2 over 3 is a simplified version of 4 over 9. Again, not exactly. That's a good, tr that's very close. It's not the simplified fraction of 4 over 9. But, but you guys are centering around something. You've mentioned this earlier. Go ahead. Oh. Yeah. Okay, 2 is the square root of 4. And 3 is the square root of 9. That's what I wanted you to notice. And so, when you look at this kind of thing, a fraction to the power of a fraction, okay, if you apply this exponent to the numerator, which is the top, and the denominator, which is the bottom, you can. that's, that's also an exponent law that you would have covered in Math 9. So, you can write this, or view this as 4 to the power of 1 half, divided by 9 to the power of 1 half, which also is the same as the square root of 4 divided by the square root of 9, which gives you simplified version. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. So that works. That works as well. And that's important to know uh, how to deal with those fractions. One more example I might give you is what? 1 over 4 
to the power of 3 over 2. Now take a minute and see if you can, without using your calculator, no calculators allowed, see if you can get that answer. In fraction form, I don't need it in decimal, in fraction form. Go ahead, no calculators. All right, how many of you got that answer? No? Okay, let's take a look at it. One, one quarter to the power of three over two. Remember, this fraction can be applied to both the numerator and the denominator. That's what I showed there. This, the two on the bottom means square root. So if you've got one to the power of three over two, that's square root of one cubed. On the bottom, square root of four cubed. You simplify the top, square root of 1 is 1, 1 cubed is 1. The square root of 4 is 2, cubed is 8. There's your answer. Alright, now we've covered a lot in this lesson, right? We've gone from knowing nothing about fractional exponents to evaluating this kind of stuff. So, this is a, this is a big lesson. So, I'm going to give you some practice here now, unless you have a question.